This is Report to Wyoming. This show targets local issues that matter in Natrona County, where we talk to real people about their thoughts and ideas. Today, I sat down with City Council members Kyle Gamroth first and then Lisa Egbertson to discuss the fallout from Mayor Nell's resignation and thoughts moving forward. When did the City Council first learn about the allegations about Bruce Nell? I have to be careful not to divulge anything from executive session, but we learned about it hours before everyone else. I'll say that. And then I know you can't speak for the city manager or the attorney, but why didn't the news conference happen immediately after? How come it took till Thursday? Well, uh, like I said, we became aware just hours before everyone else. And so, um, you know, there was a game plan that was kind of put in place. I I think everyone probably thought we'd have a little bit more time to get our ducks in a row. Um, But obviously things happen very quickly. And so, um, you know, uh, we had our council meeting Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, I believe, was when uh, K2 published a story. And then we had our press conference the next day. Uh, So, you know, Wednesday, I I had spent a lot of time conversing with the mayor, spent a lot of time reaching out to the city manager. I imagine all the other counselors, I I didn't get the chance to kind of download how their days went, but I imagine we were all reaching out to the city manager, all reaching out to the vice mayor, wondering what was going on. Um, And so Wednesday was probably just a little hectic, trying to figure out what exactly to do. And then Thursday was, you know, when they had the conference later in the afternoon. And I did notice after our article went up on Facebook, people were screenshotting all the council members' emails. Mm -hmm. So then I was wondering what your inboxes must have looked like. (laughs) I think I got a little bit luckier. Uh, I I haven't asked Ray, the vice mayor, how many he got. Uh, My guess is he got quite a bit more than uh, the rest of us. But I was actually surprised. I was surprised not more people published a story about it. I think K2 was the only one, at least for a few days. uh, and I was also kind of surprised. I thought I'd get more emails. Um, I got probably, you know, 15 to 20, which is definitely more than normal. Uh, and then I got probably 10 to 15 phone calls, which is definitely abnormal. Uh, most people don't um, feel so compelled to pick up the phone. But uh, uh, honestly, I was kind of hoping to hear from more people because, you know, uh, they were serious allegations and um, I could totally understand people's concern. And so, you know. In Nell's resignation letter, he says that the council had completely turned their backs on him. Mm-hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit from your perspective? Yeah, and I, um, I think I'm catching a little bit of flack, at least uh, what I've noticed this morning in some of the comment threads, because I do kind of keep a close eye on those. Um, I kind of took issue with that uh, statement in his uh, resignation letter because, um, and, and again, I'm kind of reiterating what I mentioned last night, but innocence and guilt aside, we don't have enough information, in my opinion. Yes, he has a background. Uh, yes, this, these recent allegations fit into the context of kind of a broader pattern of behavior for him. Uh, but still, this is super preliminary. We don't know anything. He's not even been charged with a crime. There is a protection order in place, and so that needs to be taken seriously. But um, I'm reserving judgment on you know, whether I think it actually happened or not. Um, the innocence or the guilt, though, to me, doesn't matter because in the context of kind of all the other controversies that the former mayor was embroiled in, there was, you know, recently MRG funding. We got a lot of uh, folks writing letters to us in regards to his statements about the MRG funding, the Wellspring, uh, Wellspring Health Clinic. You know, that blew up really big and we had several hours of public comment and I kind of, I had kind of a long monologue that I had to address the mayor at that time. Um, and then his uh, interviews on Fox News, we got a lot of uh, feedback that people uh, did not care for that, and I agree. I uh, didn't want him to do those interviews, so I was kind of disappointed that that happened. Um, so yeah, it, it, in the broad context, he just there was there was too much baggage. He wasn't going to be able to, regardless of whether he's innocent or guilty. There was just too much drama, um, uh, too much negative reception. Um, we just weren't being represented uh, to the quality that I think we all felt, and so. Um, that's kind of, I, I, I don't want to speak for my counselors, but that was my opinion is just there, there was no way he was going to be able to move forward and be effective in that role. And so if we go back to January, he was elected eight to one. Mm-hmm. At that time, why did you think he would be a good mayor? You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and obviously I would have chosen differently. Um, we only had three candidates for mayor at that time. I think it's important for people to recognize uh you know, um, I, I saw a lot of people uh, jumping on a comment saying uh, we should elect uh, Amber Pollock for mayor, and I am a big fan of Amber. Um, I think she's really smart, really articulate, really pragmatic, uh, but she also owns a business and is very busy. She's involved in lots of other things, and 
uh, she, as she mentioned last Friday in our elections, she just doesn't have the capacity really to. So, um, mayoralship is limited to not only the people on council, but also the people willing to fit that role. And what I think most people don't realize is that being mayor, it is kind of just ceremonial in some respects. They don't have any more voting power than the rest of council, but they there's over 200, I think like near 250 proclamations that get submitted to the city uh, manager's office every year that they you know would prefer the mayor to speak to. There's a monthly leadership meeting with county commissioners and other mayors. Uh, you have to show up to all of our council meetings a half hour early, so it's a huge time commitment. And uh, again, so there's only there's only a handful of people on council that feel like they have that bandwidth to do it. As far as um, why I thought, you know, uh, Bruce to me is a complicated figure in the sense that I think he comes across very one dimensional in his social media messaging and um, a lot of the times the, the news that's published about him because he makes the news for his controversial remarks. But when he's not being controversial, when he's not being brash and kind of uh, belligerent in some sense, he is. You know, I, I think he has redeeming qualities. He has shown humility in the past. Um, me and him have had lots of frank conversations about some of the issues I've had with him, and he's been very receptive to that. He's uh, changed his behavior as a result of that. Um, he, I think he has capacity for a great deal of empathy. He's uh, gotten tearful and emotional at council multiple times when we were uh, proclaiming Donate Life Month and when we had folks from Suicide Prevention and Awareness come speak to us. Uh, Danny Dundas's wife came and spoke to us recently about uh, a program she'd like to get off the ground and she's got a very you know compelling story that is close to us because he was a well-revered member of the police department and so you know he has redeeming qualities and I, I suppose that's what pushed me over the edge I think had either of the other candidates won I, I still don't think we would have been without controversy but I think we would have been able to get away with a lot less of it so yeah hindsight 2020 I obviously would have chosen differently had I known, but my hope was that because I had good experiences with him and he had some of these redeeming qualities, I was hoping he would continue to grow and kind of settle into that role. I feel like in the first six months he did, and then I feel like he regressed in a lot of ways these past couple months, um, you know, getting back online and um, it, you can have pretty good conversations with him in person. It just seems like online he loses a lot of that restraint and uh, respect for the other people he's engaging with. Now, I'm also seeing a lot of chatter about the way that the mayor is selected. Yeah. Um, and so, to me, I would sum up the answer um, that was given in that meeting as it's a hassle. There's a lot more to it than that. It's, it's, not, it's not that the council is unwilling to change the way it's done. I was wondering if you could speak to why you think that the current way is good or if it should change. So, yeah, we currently have a council manager form of government. I prefer this form of government. It, uh, for municipalities our size, it is the most popular form of government, and I think there's a lot of good reasons for that. The other form is a what's called a strong mayor, and that's, uh, you know, City of Cheyenne has that, so they elect their mayor. The reason I like the council manager form of government better is because Carter uh, Napier, our city manager, is such a good administrator. He, you know, he's got like an MPA probably, I, I think, and this is his job. He's got education, expertise. He is so much better suited to run this city than any of us on council now or previously. Um, and so we should really be more of just the governing board, just giving him direction, uh, but really letting him do the job. I, I don't, um, I don't uh, prefer the strong mayor form because, you know, um, there's pros and cons to each, I guess. Um, but could, could you fill me, because I'm trying to think of the pitfalls of a strong mayor system. Yeah, you know, uh, again, just I don't feel like uh, a random average Joe off the street elected to that position would do a better job than somebody who was trained and has lived their life as an administrator. Um, I certainly couldn't do Carter's job. I just don't have the uh, background, the uh, expertise, the education to be do it, uh, to be able to do it well. Would I've it become having, a popularity yeah. contest? Yeah, I mean that's part of it too. It becomes very political. You know, you have people that you you have a mayor that if they want to run for re-election, they're they're spending a, a good deal of their time campaigning for that seat and not managing the city. And so, um, I, I know Mayor Patrick Collins down in Cheyenne and. Uh, uh, got a lot of respect for him. Me and him have had a lot of great conversations, so I don't think he does a bad job necessarily, but I I just, when I've done my independent research and I've kind of uh, stacked aside all the different forms of city government you can have, 
Um, I prefer the council manager. It also pro uh, provides a lot more stability when you have somebody like Carter. You know, he's been in there uh, five, six, seven years, something like that. So his tenure can last longer than any one council members. And I think that provides stability and kind of historical, um, you know, a lot of things in the city don't get solved overnight. They take years to kind of come to a resolution. And so it provides a level of stability in that sense. Um, I can understand uh, the need for people to want to elect a mayor, but hey, people elected Bruce to city council too. He got 25% of the votes in his ward. And uh, I think that ended up being about 2,500 volts votes. So, you know, I, I can understand people um, criticizing council for not having the foresight to uh, uh, know that he would be a less than ideal mayor. Uh, but at the end of the day, city Casper residents voted him in there in the first place. Now, looking to the future, what kind of characteristics do you think are the most important for a mayor? If you could name, let's say, three. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I was a big fan of Mayor Friel when he was mayor because he would always... Um, so he showed a tremendous amount of restraint, and I think that's important because we do get a lot of people that are very frustrated or angry uh, when they come and speak to us in council, and you have to have a lot of restraint to be able to uh, keep your composure and not be reactive or say things that uh, you know you might later regret. Uh, Steve also was the last to speak every time. He always gave people the floor before himself, and I think that shows a lot of humility. Um, that's another trait I think a good mayor should have is humility, being willing to accept when you're wrong, uh, admit when you're wrong, and being able to recognize that you don't know everything and that you got a lot to learn from other people. And then um, a third one, uh, you know, just being a good meeting facilitator, because that's really the primary role of the mayor is just to make sure our meetings smooth, uh, you know, flow smoothly and that we stay on track with the agenda and that everyone feels heard. and. Um, feels respected and so yeah uh, those are kind of the three I look for I guess humility restraint and kind of just the ability to facilitate meetings in an effective way now I know there will there will be some open seats in 2024 for council do you know how many well so the next election uh, in November of 24 I believe uh, it's always half of council and obviously we have nine members so it's four one year and five the other year uh, next year I think when I came on council, it was me, Lisa, Amber, Bruce, um, and I think it was just those four, but I think Steve, Kathy. So I think it'll be four members if I'm, well, I mean, it'll be us four. It'll be the people who came in with me. So it'll be me, Amber. Um, we obviously need to appoint someone to Bruce's seat, but whoever we appoint to that seat, that seat will be open. Um, and then I believe Steve's and then, yeah, Lisa. So I think there'll be five. Um, and what um, do you think are the biggest issues for council in the upcoming year? Homelessness is something we talk about all the time. I have a homelessness coalition meeting this Friday. Um, Carter, our city manager, just spoke to the Joint Judiciary Committee of the legislature last week talking about the fact that we have um, uh, people getting bused to Casper. Uh, I want to address a misconception. A lot of people think that means it's illegal immigrants or people from Mexico. That's not the case. Uh, there might be a couple of those folks uh, scattered in there, but it's mostly from other municipalities in the state that don't have the resources that we do here. Um, the, the example Carter mentioned in the Joint Judiciary Committee meeting was the fact that uh, from Fremont County, we recently received um, over a dozen people. There was no warning that they were coming. There was no, um, uh, you know, um, a warning of what sort of services they need or anything they they showed up here and uh, a lot of them you know have criminal backgrounds and just they're not suitable for like the rescue mission which does require people not to be using substances at the time these folks all had substance abuse issues and so you know we don't have any more resources at least at this point to help those folks in any other city and so uh, really trying to lock that down and keep that from happening making sure that there's warm handoffs i, I recognize that we have uh, an urban center, so we have the community mental health center, the psych uh, institution in WBI, and um, the mission. You know, we have resources other folks don't have, so I understand that there's going to be a need for folks to come here for services, but there also needs to be a plan to get those folks back to their home communities um, uh, and also help fund some of those services. The city of Casper cannot be uh, forced to shoulder the burden of the state's entire homeless population, providing services, housing them, getting them employed. We just simply don't have the resources. It'll be interesting to see how you guys attack this problem. It's a big one, so. Oh yeah, and we're not gonna solve it. I mean, homelessness is bigger than the city of Casper. Uh, economic stability and uh, folks' paychecks not going as far as they used to. That's not a Casper problem. That is a 
uh, you know, homelessness across the country is increasing, and uh, City of Casper can't fix that, but we can we can do what we can to mitigate the impact that we're seeing here and be as responsible uh, as we can, giving people help and the services they need, but also, you know, enforcing the laws that we have on the books and not um, allowing some of the things that have played out in other cities to play out here. I think we got a lot that we can learn from uh, other cities' mistakes. Well, while I have you here, anything else that you want the audience to know? Uh, no, not necessarily. I, I guess um, just, uh, you know, there were there were reasons. Uh, we got a lot of flack, uh, council as a whole, for not saying more last week. Um, there is a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, that, so I would just remind people of that. Just because you're not seeing public statements doesn't mean that we're not talking to each other and uh, doing what we can behind the scenes. But I do understand the need for, like, transparent communication with the public. I had, like I said, I had 10, 15, maybe people reach out to me on phone and uh, about the same, maybe more reach out through email. And I felt like I had more ability to communicate with those people then. You, you know, at the end of the day, we needed the former mayor to resign. There was really no other option available to us other than uh, initiating a hearing that required outside counsel. And, uh, you know, that that's a court related process so that takes several months to play out or a petition signed by 25 percent of the registered voters in his ward both of those would have taken months um and so we really needed the former mayor to resign and that's why i was uh, i can't speak for the rest of the council that's why i was personally careful not to be out there um you know um giving him too much criticism because i didn't want him to feel like he was backed into a corner or i didn't want him to feel like he you know i wanted him to make the right decision and so i was trying to be careful with my own uh, rhetoric and my own behavior because that's the outcome we needed and um, so you know I, I understand people that were hoping for more communication that you know were upset with the way things played out and I guess I would just ask if you have questions if you have concerns call email I got a Facebook page get a hold of me there um, if you feel like uh, what we're saying in public isn't quite cutting it. About an hour after council member Gamroth left, I was able to sit down with Lisa Egbritson and hear her thoughts. Back in January, Bruce Nell was elected eight to one, and you were the only one who didn't vote for him. Can you tell me why that was? Uh, yes. Um, I've got my statement that I did read on city council the other night, and so I can just go ahead and just reread this a little bit um, and then add to it if you need be. Um, I chose not to vote for Mr. Nell as mayor because I felt he was not ready to be put in that position at that time. During our previous council meetings, Mr. Nell would often speak off of the cuff, causing a lot of inflammatory conversations on social media. I did not appreciate the direction he took with people regarding issues that we were dealing with at the time at council. It was my opinion at that time Mr. Nell would not be suitable as mayor, and so I voted against him. Um, Mr. Nell approached me after the council meeting and asked me why, and, and I told him exactly why that I just disagreed with his stance and, and how he presented himself, and he just said that he would do better, and that was it it was not it wasn't a confrontational conversation it wasn't disrespectful it was just we agreed to, not, to disagree now some people in social media discourse have said that he um, was more scathing towards females at council meetings did you have any concerns like that when you were observing him I I didn't see necessarily if it was necessarily slighted towards you know I mean one way or the other i had been sent multiple messages that he had sent had people private messages and people had sent myself some of those messages and not all of them were women some of them were men as well and so um but some of the comments and things during either council meetings or on social media the abortion clinic and other things i just felt was directed more towards women did you ever at any point feel like there was a safety issue or that he was, I guess, in a, beyond inappropriate with people? You know, some people have said he was rude. Um, he was homophobic. Of course, these are just statements that people are making in comments and on social media. But did you ever at any point ever feel like he was dangerous? I did not. I don't, I believe that all of us felt perfectly fine in his company. 
And do you think that the public was too quick to um, condemn him for the allegations that came out about domestic abuse? I think that the public reacted based from the frustration from years of him on Facebook and just berating people and and just not being very professional and I think that it was just a swift reaction that the public had had due to years of Mr. Nell doing these things. And do you think it was a good idea under the circumstances for him to resign when he did? I do. Yes, I think that that was the appropriate thing for him to do. Okay. Um, during the meeting on Friday at the Lyric, um, during the elections, there were several nominations made, um, and you were nom or you self-nominated, as did uh, Jenna, and you said that it was important that the council consider having female leadership. And Amber Pollock was also nominated at that point. Um, she took back her nomination. There's probably a word for that. But um, that also shows that she supported that thinking. Um, can you tell me what made you decide to nominate yourself as the female leader? It's, I guess, my thought was, and it is nothing to diminish the men on council in any way, shape, or form. I just thought for this small period, this interim period for the next three months, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a female on council due to the fact of all of the allegations and things that we have been dealing with for the last couple of years on council. Maybe it would help kind of ease things up a little bit. And so that was just more or less my stance is just that I did feel like a lot of comments were directed towards women and that we had a lot of constituents that were very upset with his comments. And also the women on the council are outnumbered by the men and that's kind of been a pattern. Do you think it's more, uh, it's important for more women to consider joining the council? Actually, I think that we have a really good mix. Um, historically, women in leadership are very low. And so, um, and in, in politics, leadership or whatever, women tend to just not step into those roles because um, people always will bash you because you're a female, how are you qualified type of a scenario. And you, you can see comments currently happening right now on Facebook because I said I'm a woman, therefore I shouldn't be elected because I'm a woman. And so honestly, my, my viewpoint to that is, is that if you look up this, the statistics, 23 to 24% of women typically are in a leadership role in politics. And women need to understand that we deserve a seat at the table. And we bring a very valuable piece to the table. And so we have the power to negotiate and be able to do things just as well as men. And I don't think that men should be put to the back burner, but I don't think us women should be either. I think that we all deserve a seat and we all deserve to be heard. When you decided to join the council, what were you most passionate about? Well, I'm a realtor. <laughs> so um, I have sworn to the code of ethics. And so my first goal, why I got onto council was property rights. And so I have sworn an oath to protect property rights. And so there were things happening at that time that I disagreed with. And because I'm the type of person that I'm not just going to go on Facebook and just complain, 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 and I'm not going to go to council and just complain constantly. I'm going to do something about it. So I ran for council and I got elected. And a lot of people are talking about the way that the mayor is selected, um, uh, arguing for a strong mayor system. I was wondering if you could give your opinion on that, whether you think it's a good idea or bad idea. I, I think it's a bad idea. We haven't had that mayor system since the early 1950s. And so we've always had the city manager. And so there's good and bad for both. But I like the way that our council is ran because the mayor is basically a figurehead. And so we're running the meetings or, or whatever, we're a figurehead, but we have the city manager who can be fired. And so it's, 
and you can change personnel council has the ability to fire them if they're doing something stealing money or whatever to get rid of a mayor that's elected it is significantly harder to get rid of an elected official so i know that other places have got elected mayors and you see a lot of problems that they've got with those systems no system is perfect but i do like our system okay and then um let me see i think i have one more question oh yes how have your responsibilities shifted since you've become the vice mayor i know it hasn't been very long but <laughs> Um, so far we haven't quite got everything figured out it's you know so we're still I'm still trying to figure things out I I'm sure that there's going to be a few extra meetings and things of that nature but um, it's not a tremendous shift I'm already on several different boards so I just maintain those and since joining the council how has your view of um, the council shifted you know behind the scenes having the meetings where people don't get to see you guys having conversations what's changed um, well my viewpoint so um, I, I suppose one of the big things is is that there was just a lot of times that I kind of thought that the city was wasting money on a lot of different pieces and so now that I'm on the inside and you're working through the budget and I can understand the budgeting processes considerably more I know that when I was running I was considerably wrong and so um, the way that the city the way with we have to separate out the one cent money and and spend our money and how we have to we try to pour over and think about our budget and our bottom line and our money every single time we're going through that and so we're not just simply approving things just to have nice shiny things and so these we're just trying to just take care of the city and then for the rest of this year i know a lot of it will be just trying to regroup and survive till the end of the year you guys i think have done a really seamless job at sort of figuring out who's going to step up and you're doing the right things to make sure that the responsibilities can be covered what do you think are the biggest priorities or even one priority to focus on for the rest of the year well, you know, we've got some things that we're just trying to still button up from this year. And so we're still working on those, but we're also in the middle of dealing with all of the fallout over the mayor resigning and things of that nature. So um, we're dealing with some unknowns that we're not sure how we're going to approach those. So we're trying to anticipate the unknowns as well as the knowns. And so, you know, we've got a lot of projects that we're working on and trying to just get those to go through. But in addition to also trying to be a little bit more transparent and, and then open up to the public, because I think that the public does need to be heard and they do have concerns. And I know that they were very upset that Mr. Nell was voted mayor and and i think that um they're questioning a lot about how he became mayor and that is not a question i can answer because i i could not in good conscience vote for him and it was just there was just a lot of different things and so um that is for the other council members to explain why they did choose to vote for him all right this has been Report to Wyoming, presented in the public interest by Town Square Media.